tonight, the DuPont Company brings you An Honorable Titan, starring Robert Young on The Cavalcade of America. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Would you like to have a home to match that up-and-doing feeling that comes with these crisp fall days? Try painting drab, dingy walls with DuPont Speed Easy and see how your home sparkles with new light. You can choose from white and 11 zestful colors. And Speed Easy is so easy to use. Fill it with water and apply over interior wall surfaces. Right over wallpaper, if you like, with a large brush or roller. It dries in an hour. It's economical, too. Less than $3 for one color of an average-sized room. Give your home a lift with Speed Easy, the really easy-to-use wall paint that is one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. America, the town crier. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Eight o'clock, get on. The wire news services. America, the New York Times. America means skyscrapers and haylofts. The crack of a pioneer's flintlock and the sound of the riveter's machine. Home sweet home and the Basin Street Blues. America is your story. America is you and everyone you know. Tonight we present Robert Young in An Honorable Titan, another true story on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. <laughs> In New York City, rising out of the milling crowds, the blaring traffic, and the cacophony of noises of a great city, is the New York Times building. Around it are the 50,000 square feet known to the world as Times Square. It stands as a monument to a man whose vision, courage, and enterprise were the stone and mortar that built the newspaper and the building. His name, Adolf Ox. Born to poverty, Adolf Ox grew to young manhood with one thought in mind, to give America a newspaper that would serve the people without prejudice or bias. It was in the year 1878 that young Ox, then 20 years old, purchased the Chattanooga Times in Tennessee. And it was that proudly he spoke to Mr. McGowan, his editor. Adolf S. Ox, publisher. <laughs> Set it in um, agate, Mr. McGowan. Hmm. Well, what's that for? Taking over a $1,500 debt. Don't you think I can make a go of this? I hope so, for your sake. And yours, Mr. McGowan? You're the editor. Aye, the paper whose circulation is doing around my bootstraps. Oh, that. Aye, that. I tell you, Mr. Ox, in these times, a man shouldn't go into a business venture. What's the matter with these times? They're bad, man, bad. And just what capital do you have? They uh, lent me $300. You asked for eight? I expected two. Da, you're daft. I. Huh? <laughs> I said I. How can you stand there grinning like a cat when we've got nothing to work on? We've got $12.50. Let's get out the paper, Mr. McGowan. All right. Now, what's our editorial policy? Yes, that. Uh, got to have one. That we do. What's your idea? I uh, don't quite know yet. I've been thinking about it. Tell you what, Mr. McGowan, I'm going to take a run up to Cincinnati tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Mixing romance with business, eh? You're a smart man, Mr. McGowan. I... When I come back, I'll come back with our editorial policy. Good evening, Dr. Weiss. Adolf, come in, my boy. Thank you. I'll take your hat and coat. All right. I heard about the newspaper you bought. That's a fine thing, Adolf. All right. It's going to be hard going at first. Come into the living room. Hard going? Yes, it will be. But the harder it is, the greater the reward in here, in your heart. Sit down. Thanks. I'll tell Effie you're here. Oh, but I uh, wanted to talk with you, too. Oh. Of course. Effie. Effie. Yes, 
Come into the living room, will you, dear? Right away, Father. Effie is pleased with what you've done. I hope so. Dr. Wise, I um, own a newspaper now, and I wonder... That is, I... I've been seeing Effie, and I... Being her father, I'm in a position to know how often you've been seeing her. Yes, of course. But, uh, I... Uh... <laughs> Adolf, I should be proud to have you for a son-in-law. <laughs> how did you know I... I don't know, my boy. I... I really don't know. <laughs> father, what is... Oh. Hello. Hello, Effie. Adolf, I think it's wonderful. About the paper, I mean. Do you really? Oh, yes. And Father does, too. Don't you, Father? Yes, I do. But, Adolf, have you thought what it means? Yes, I have. I know it's a responsibility. Mm-hmm. More. It means you've undertaken a duty, my boy, an almost sacred duty to the people whom you will serve. I know that, sir. Adolf, a long time ago, I came to America from Europe. I wanted to find something more precious than life itself intellectual freedom. I found it here in America and laid off. Intellectual freedom is the thing you must keep alive with your paper. Do you see? Yes, I see, but uh, how can I express it with a paper? How can a newspaper help preserve it? Adolf, what is a country? Earth, crops, industry? Well, yes, sir. And what makes up those things? The uh, people. That's right, Adolf. A newspaper must serve the people. It must be for the people. Not for the exceptional few. It must be for the whole people. That's it. That's it. I'll print the affairs of everyday men. The affairs that mean bread and butter and shelter. <laughs> More than ever now, Adolf. The answer to the question you asked me before is yes. Excuse me now. Time for an old man to go to bed. Good night, Adolf. Good night, sir. Good night. Adolf, uh, what question was Father talking about? Question? Well, I... <laughs> I asked him if he'd uh, object to me as, as a son-in-law. Oh. Well, this is so sudden, Mr. Ark. Uh, don't you think you'd better ask his daughter about it? <laughs> Oh, oh, hello, Mr. McGowan. <laughs> what's the matter with you? Your hair's standing on end. Well, what's the meaning of this, lad? Oh, the plans? Yes, these plans. A new building? Are you taking all leave of your senses? No, I don't think so. I've got another opinion. Adolf, lad, you've made a go of the Chattanooga Times. That I'll give you credit for. But we can't afford a thing like this. Why not? Listen, lad. These are bad times. Men failing all around us. We ought to be paring down the staff instead of planning a new building. And one with a golden dome at that. Well, I thought that was a good idea. Cut down the staff, retrench, save expenses, or we'll go to the wall as sure as you're a foot high. Come over here to the window, Mac. What now? You'll see. See those people out there on the street? Adolf, I've got no time to be... Take time, Mac. Take time to look at those people and realize that a newspaper is a function that's just as important as printing news. I don't understand you. It's simple. So simple, Mac. A newspaper, more than just printing news, must be the means of lifting the morale of the people who read it. Well, how would it look if I cut down my staff, cancel plans for the new building? It would look as though you're getting some common sense. The greatest common sense, Mac, is putting trust in those people by showing I have it myself. If I prove by example that I think business is worth continued investment, I'll prove to my readers that what is called bad times is just a breathing spell. Then I'll have kept faith with them. Right. Lad, I don't know how to argue with you. <laughs> then don't, Mac. We're going ahead with the new building, with the Golden Dome. Effie! Effie, where are you? Effie! Here, dear, what are you shouting listen, for? Listen, Effie, sit down. But, uh, now sit down and listen. Uh, all right, dear. Now look, Mrs. Hawks. What would you say if I told you your husband was going to New York? New, New York? Yes, New York City. On business, Doc? Well, yes, call it business. Well, uh, uh, when are you going? We, when are we going? We? You, 
You mean I'm going to? Of course. Well, for how long? To uh, live there. Oh, Al. Darling, please start at the beginning. <laughs> All right. I'm going to buy the New York Mercury. A newspaper? That's right. New York, dearest. New York, the biggest city in America. Think what that chance means. Well, I am, Adolf, but this is awfully sudden, isn't it? Well, not exactly. I've had it in mind for a long time. Buying the Mercury will give me the chance I want. Effie, don't you like the idea? Adolf, do you think it's the wisest thing to do? What do you mean? Well, you've made a go of the Chattanooga Times, darling. It's doing fine. Now, suppose... Well, suppose you went to New York. You'd have to undertake new risks, new liabilities. You mean I... I couldn't handle the job? Oh, no. No, but in New York, you'd be a small-town newspaper man stepping in where others... Effie, been... I'm going to buy the Mercury. Yes, I know you are, but I... And I want you to get hurt. <laughs> Is that all you're afraid of? Well, of course that's all. It's not because you think I'm not good enough. Oh, no. No, but you're almost like a little boy who's going to get a new toy. Well, a newspaper is hardly a toy. That isn't what I meant. It's that you're... Well, you're so enthusiastic. Now, suppose something happens to kill that enthusiasm. What then? Nothing will. I made the Chattanooga Times here a going newspaper. I'll do the same with the Mercury. You're so sure, Adolf. Yes, I'm sure. Effie, a newspaper to me is food and drink. It's life itself. Printing news, facts and facts alone. I'll make the Mercury a paper that will print the most exciting news in the world. True news. That's what I want to do, Effie. And you'll do it. Think of it, Effie. New York, towers and crowded streets, people. Thousands upon thousands of people. And you and I. You and I to... Fit the door. I'll answer it, darling. All right. Were you expecting anyone? No. Hello, Mrs. Ox. Is that Dolphin? Yes, Mr. McGowan. Come in. This telegram came from him just after he'd left the office. Telegram? From New York. New York. Oh, it must be about the Mercury. Well, come on. Darling, a telegram. Mr. McGowan brought it. Telegram? Aye. <laughs> From New York. Like is not the news you've been wanting, Adolf. Let me have a hit. Hmm. Adolf. What's the matter, lad? I, uh... Effie, what was that you said about a small-town newspaper man? Darling, let me see that. Yeah. Offer for Mercury refused. Deal off. Well, it was a great dream while it lasted. Never you mind. There'll be another chance. Aye, of course there will. Chance? <laughs> Looks like I've had it and failed. Maybe I ought to give up the idea of the big city and stay in the smaller one. You'll do nothing of the sort. Since when did you let one setback stop you? But you don't understand, Effie. This was my one chance, my one big chance to own a newspaper in a big city. Now it's gone. I'll never get another. Lad, don't talk like that. No, Adolf. Somehow I feel... I, I know there'll be another chance. And a bigger one. A much bigger one than this. You're listening to Robert Young as Adolf Ox in An Honorable Titan on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Adolf Ox is about to leave Chattanooga for New York. He seems happy about it, but his wife is less enthusiastic about the reason for the trip. Now, you, you, you've got everything, haven't you, Adam? Yes, dear, yes. And you're going to wire me as soon as you get in? The very second. And let's see that... I guess that's all. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't like this, do you? Of course I do. No, you don't. All right, I don't. But you're going to do it anyway. I'm not mad, are you? Certainly not. Well, you were the one who said a bigger chance would come. Yes, but is this it? I think so. <sighs> if only it were some other paper, not the New York Times. It's failed. Why, it's practically in, in the... the hands of the receivers. I know. I've heard that a hundred times. But I don't care, Effie. They've offered me the chance to manage it, publish it. I'm going to take that chance. I knew you would. You love me very much? Yes, very much. And kiss me goodbye. I... 
darling. You take care of yourself and come back. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Don't worry. When I see you again, I'll be publisher of the New York Times. I don't think you quite understand, Mr. Ox. We're offering you 50000 a year to manage the Times. I understand that, Mr. Trask. That's a great deal of money, Mr. Ox. Yes, it is. As much as I have. Uh, Mr. Ox, uh, what is your proposition? You uh, may not like it, Mr. Miller. Well, let's hear it anyway. All right. You offer me 50000 a year to manage the Times. Gentlemen, that's not what I want. More money? No, less money. I beg your pardon? Did you say less money? All I want is 10000 a year. Mr. Ox, I hope you're not joking with us. Far from it, Mr. Trask. The uh, New York Times is bankrupt, isn't that true? Conceded, Mr. Ox. And for the last three years, the deficit has exceeded 100000 a year, right? That's true, but wait, I turned down your offer. Now you've got a right to hear mine. Here it is. I'll manage this paper so that the deficit will be wiped out. I'll make the paper earn and pay 5% interest on 500000 Create a sinking fund of 15000 a year. Uh, just a moment. That would mean turning an annual deficit of more than 100000 into... Into uh... a surplus of 40000 Does that service sound worthwhile, gentlemen? Mr. Miller? It does, but uh, where's the magician to do this? I'm no magician. I'm a newspaper man with faith in his profession. And in the people who will read the New York Times. Mr. Arks. Yes, Mr. Miller. Now that you've told us what you'll do, if you take over, there's one thing that's puzzling me. What's that? What do you want? 10000 a year. I'll invest 50000 of my own money in the time. But, uh, however... Oh, there's a however. Yes, this. Deposit 3,876 shares of stock in escrow for me. What? That stock to become mine only when the paper has shown a profit for three consecutive years. But, Mr. There's more... My $50,000 will have bought me 1,125 shares. Which means at the end of three years, you will own the controlling interest in the paper. 5,001 shares. But that's preposterous. Remember, I must show a profit for three consecutive years. It's out of the question. Uh, Your proposition, I mean. I'm willing to take the chance. I stand to lose as well. Uh, why, uh... Why do you want controlling interest, Mr. Ox? Why? Gentlemen, not because I want to own a paper. Not because I want to control. Believe me, that's not it. Then what is it? It's because I want to give the people of New York a paper of which they can be proud. One that stands for every ideal a newspaper should have. Cleanliness, fair play, and giving the people all of the news that's fit to print. It's not ownership that I want, gentlemen. It's the pride that comes from knowing I've done a job. And I've done it well. Mr. Ox? As far as I'm concerned, the New York Times has a new publisher. Mr. Arts, here's the figures you wanted. Oh, good, Miller. Hmm, not so good. The Times isn't paying for the paper it's printed on. In other words, we need money. Yes. Have you thought of how you're going to raise it? What do you think? Well, we can't get it through advertising. Then we've got to get it through circulation. That was my idea. And a good one. Look, our paper is selling for three cents. I say raise it to a nickel. Oh, five cents. Huh? Sure. We've got to raise money somehow. Mr. Miller, lower the price to one cent. One cent? A penny from three? Oh, but that's crazy. Why? Look, we've got a class circulation. That's our selling point to advertisers. That our circulation is among the most intelligent element in New York. Found on the highest economic level. Lower the price of the paper and you'll lose the Times claim to quality. Mr. Miller, the intelligence of our people is not expressed by bank accounts. We're going to lower the price of the Times, not its quality. The duty of a newspaper, first, last, and always, is to serve the people. Lower the price to a penny, Mr. Miller. Hey, yeah, New York Times, get your time here. One penny, one cent a copy, New York Times here. I think I'll subscribe to the New York Times.
New York Times. I like the way it fits the news. Times, good paper. Prints the stuff I like to read about. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to dedicate this new building and name the site Times Square. Mr. Ox, you wanted to see me? Yes. Uh, have you had time to read my plan? Yes, I have. And uh, what do you think? <laughs> You're asking me what I think, Mr. Ox? Well, didn't I always ask? Yes, you did. But you always had your own answer. <laughs> We've been together a long time now. We've seen the times grow into a fine paper. A great one. Well, I guess so. Anyway, how do those things look to you? Are they legal? Perfectly. Group insurance for the employees. And the uh, sick benefits, those all right, too? They're fine. And the old age benefits, how about them? Not a thing wrong with the plan, the way you've drawn it up. All right. Put them through. All right, I don't. You see, a man gets tired when he gets old, left. He even gets too tired to work after a while. He's earned the right to rest. You, you're not ill, Adolf. Oh, no. Maybe, maybe I'm a little tired, too. Why did you want to come to the office this late, darling? I, uh... Effie, I want to see it for the last time. Are you sure you want to leave all this, Adolf? I've done my job, Effie. And a good job, too. Then we'll go back to Chattanooga. I love you, Effie. I, uh... haven't said that much in the last few years, have I? But you knew it. Every minute. I'll uh, leave things just as they are on the desk. Mm, let's go. All right, darling. Oh, uh, wait a minute. That's Times Square, dear. Adolf, you don't want to leave. You want to stay here, don't you? No, I just wanted to open the window. Look out once more. Effie. Yes? The people down there. You know, Effie, it's really wonderful. I'm glad I gave all the years of my life for this. Shh. Read all about it. Listen. Hey, yeah, New York Times. Read about it in the New York Times. Hey, yeah. All the news that's fit to print. The New York Times. In a moment, our star, Robert Young, will return. But first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. At this very moment, the golden radiance of tractor headlights is lighting the fields of the corn belt. Farmers are even working nights with their corn pickers to bring in the greatest corn crop in the history of America, nearly three and a half billion bushels of corn. Corn is a food crop, but only about 2% of the amount grown reaches the dinner table as corn. The rest is used for feed, reaching you as bacon, ham, poultry, eggs, beef, and butter. Corn is also a raw material for industry, particularly for chemical industry. It finds its way, after chemical transformation, into chewing gum, cosmetics, paints, brake fluids, scores of other products. Corn is an important crop, a very important crop. This is why the DuPont Company has worked shoulder to shoulder for many years with farmers, botanists, and plant pathologists 
for bumper crops like the 1946 yield. One important contribution the scientist has made is the chemical treatment of seed with preventive medicine, you might call it that, to ward off diseases which might otherwise harm the young corn plants and the resulting crop. To quote a plant pathologist of Iowa State College, between 90 and 95 percent of the seed corn planted in Iowa is treated. There is no doubt in my mind but what this universal treating has had a lot to do with the phenomenal success of corn in recent years, unquote. The latest DuPont development for treating seed corn grew out of more than two years of research in the DuPont Semisan Laboratories. Known as the slurry method, it applies DuPont Arisan SF seed disinfectant to the corn in liquid form. Arisan SF is so powerful that 100 pounds of it will treat seed for nearly 25,000 acres of corn. The efficient development of this powerful aid to agriculture, the speed with which it was put into use, illustrate the fact that under our business system, the American farmer, the American scientist, and the American businessmen are equal partners. Arisan SF is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now here is our star, Robert Young. And I think he'd like to say a word about tonight's story. Thank you, Gain. You know, I've always been more than a little impressed by the romance and excitement of newspaper work. But I've always thought of it in terms of city desks, fast-talking reporters, and scoops on the latest news. And playing the role of Adolf Ox gave me an insight to a completely different part of the business. I was interested in learning about this Tennessee newsboy who, through his initiative, hard work, and courage, rose to become one of the greatest publishers in the world. He believed so strongly in his principles that he was willing to gamble, fight against innumerable handicaps to prove them. I think, Gain, on the next trip I make to New York... Times Square will take on a new meaning and understanding for me because of tonight's show. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present a thrilling drama starring the talented young motion picture star John Hodiak in Wings to Freedom. It's the story of John Montgomery, the first American ever to fly a heavier-than-air machine. It's a true story and an exciting radio play, so be sure and listen next Monday at the same time when the Cavalcade of America again comes to you, sponsored by the DuPont Company. It is every American's most important right and most important duty to go to the polls and vote on Election Day. We should, all of us of voting age, assume this great responsibility tomorrow, November 5th. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Robert Young may currently be seen in the RKO picture Lady Luck. Featured in the cast with Robert Young tonight were Francis Cheney as Effie, Herbert Butterfield as McGowan, and Griff Barnett as Dr. Wise. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to John Hodiak in Wings to Freedom on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>